Hey there guys, so I kind of been wanting some meatloaf. So let's make us some meatloaf. All right, so as most of my recipes, this is gonna come from my grandmother. Let me get to my meatloaf recipe. So for this, we're gonna need two thirds a cup of beef stock, Three fourths cup oats, pound of ground beef, an egg. She says to put one small onion. I don't like the texture of onion, so I use onion powder. Worcestershire sauce, and then for the sauce, we do equal parts mustard, ketchup, and brown sugar. So let's see, our oven is going to 350. And I feel like being really lazy. So I'm gonna make this in my Pyrex dish, that way I can Mix it in this dish and just put it in there. All right, and this is actually ground turkey. All right, come on out of there. We need all of that, thank you. So we also need two-thirds of a cup of beef stock. Now, I don't have that, but what I do have is this instant gravy mix for beef, um, and it works just as well. All right. And I don't usually, yeah, it's five tablespoons of gravy granules per cup of water, but I usually just dump some in there because I'm using it more for the gravy flavor. I don't want it to be as thick as gravy gravy. So I probably put like a tablespoon in for that two third cup. So I'm gonna actually let that sit. Just gonna stir it up. Actually, I might go ahead and nuke it. Sometimes it works better if you nuke it. Alright, so I'm just going to let that heat up for about a minute. Then I need three-fourths of a cup of oats. And these are just plain, old-fashioned rolled oats. Now, my stepdad doesn't like this recipe because he doesn't like the texture of the oats. So that is something to keep in mind is that the oats will change the texture. But I like it. So we need three-fourths of a cup. Let's use my fourth cup measure here. So my first thing, by the way, said to mix the ground beef, oats, egg, onion, and Worcestershire, and the salt and pepper. So she calls for one small onion. So I typically just Put, you know, just kind of sprinkle it over the top. I would say probably maybe like a couple of tablespoons for a pound. So and now this is another thing, obviously this is from my grandmother. So you'll notice I don't have an amount. It just says Worcestershire sauce. So this is something that my grandmother does a lot. She doesn't give me amount. So here's all that gravy mixed up. Now you'll notice it's still very thin. And that's why I said that I typically don't go with the amount that they said. So we're just gonna let that hang out. Go ahead and put my egg in here. And we're just gonna do probably about a tablespoon maybe just a few good shots of Worcestershire. And then we're gonna mix this together. Now, somebody somewhere told, I'm not gonna do this because I'm doing this in my Pyrex, but somebody told me that if you don't like mixing ground beef with your hands uh, to use pastry cutter. I can't stand the texture of that, so I will not be doing this with my bare hands. 
I'm not gonna use this because I am doing this in Pyrex and being extra lazy, but that is something to keep in mind. What I will use is my little fancy meat chopper thing. I love this thing. Yes, thank you, we're not done yet. I'm not quite ready for you yet. So I get that like my texture will not be quite the same with this as somebody who uses their fingers. I just can't stand that texture. All right, so we're just mixing all this together. And again, I don't have an amount for these, so I just kinda do probably, I would say like a tablespoon of each, roughly, not really, I don't know. But I am just using this because it's easier to kind of mush it around. It might take me a little longer, but this is how I like to do it. All right, so once you kind of get it to this point, I get all of this off of here. this to get those little bits that aren't wanting to work in there. Make sure everything is all well combined. Okay. Now you may be going, well, but that doesn't look like it yet. We still haven't added our other stuff yet. Well, this is what our next instruction says. We add our beef stock until it looks moist, but not soupy. As opposed to her dressing recipe, which says to go until it looks soupy and add a little more. All right. So now we're going to mix this in. And we may not need all of this, so I just added probably about half that liquid. And we're going to put it all in here. Because it is summer in Georgia, so... We may not need all of that liquid for it to be moist. I do feel just a little bit of, oh, we were not mixed in all the way. Well, okay, there it goes. Again, this probably would be better with actual beef broth, but I come from the make do with what you got. So now this is gonna go in the oven uh, for about an hour at 350. And I'll be back then. All right, so it's been an hour. I wish y'all could smell it in here. It smells so good. Ooh, it looks done. All right. So I'm going to actually turn my oven off because there's enough carryover heat in there that it'll be able to do the glaze. All right, so basically with this, you just wanna do like equal-ish parts. So I just dumped, it says it's the half a cup. It's probably closer to like a third if you smashed it down. So I'm just doing equal parts of brown sugar, yellow mustard, And 
and plain old ketchup. of the color that it turns. I'll know that I put enough in when it turns pretty much that color right there. Kind of like the same color as the meat almost. I want like a burnt, burnt orange kind of color. Make sure I got all of that in there. And I don't know if this is enough. It may not be enough. We don't skimp on our sauce. And that's one of the reasons I like doing this in the Pyrex instead of in the um, meatloaf pan is you get more the sauce like more evenly distributed yeah and I can do like a thinner layer of it but you still get sauce in every bite oh, that may have been enough. Oh. I also prefer more of the crispy outer part so having you know, it, it in this bigger pan does give it, gives it more crust. Oh, that was good. All right. So I'm gonna put this back in the oven and just kind of let the oven cool down. Again, I've already turned the oven off. Watch out, baby. About to open the oven. This is something that my mom said that I always did. It's called the oven cool down method. Um, and I originally started doing this because I was scared to open the oven when I was learning to cook. I think I've said this in a video before, but, but that's how I learned how to do things in the oven is, you know, you kind of, I adjusted the time a little bit, turned the oven off and just let it cool down in the oven. So that way I didn't have to get it out until it was cool. But I have also found nowadays that for me it works really well when things aren't wanting to be cooperative. If, if things are just not wanting to get done all the way, and it's, it's not something that you can really tell, but y'all know what I'm talking about. If you cook, you know what I'm talking about. Like it should be done. There's no reason it should not be done. But for some reason it's not done. That's when I kind of use this method. Just turn it off. Or like with this, I'm not needing this to cook anything. I'm needing that sauce to just kind of glaze and heat through and bubble up. So why not use the energy that's that I've already used instead of creating more and just let the oven, the heat that's already in the oven just do all the work for me. So, but anyway, I'm gonna leave this in here. I would say probably about mm, five, 10 minutes just to let that top get nice and bubbly and caramelized and I will be back. All right, so it's actually been a little longer than about 10 minutes. It's been, it's probably been like 20, 25 minutes, but you can see it still looks good. That's another benefit of using the oven cool down method. All right, so now I'm actually gonna have mine on a sandwich. That's kind of what I feel like right now. Oh, don't you touch that. All right. I usually like cutting mine pretty thin when I'm using them for sandwiches. Ow. A little warm. The 
is another card! Ah! I can't do this one handed, so I gotta. There we go. Now I can actually, like, grab hold of the meat and get it out. Oh, come on, come out of there. Please? Doesn't that look just so good? I love, I love a good meatloaf. I have me a nice meatloaf sandwich. Meatloaf also freezes beautifully. Um, this one I'm probably not gonna freeze just cause I'm trying to clean my freezers out. And I've been craving hamburgers like crazy lately. So that's the reason I made meatloaf is I just make meatloaf sandwiches instead. When I do freeze them, I usually put them in these containers. If I'm gonna make like a shepherd's pie meatloaf and actually have like mashed potatoes, I'll put it in these taller ones so I can do the bottom half is the meatloaf and the top half is the mashed potatoes. If I just want it by itself to have with other things, I'll put it in these. These Ziploc containers are my absolute favorite thing and we'll have them in the description below if you want to check them out. It holds a cup of food. So this is literally a perfect size for one person. So let's say that, you know, you don't want to cook things, you don't want to have to go out to eat on your lunch at work. If you pull this out of the freezer in the morning, put it in your lunchbox and take it to work, it will be perfectly thawed by the time it is lunchtime. These depends. Sometimes these will be completely thawed. It depends on how densely you have the food packed in there. But like a lot of times I'll use this for like fruit or other things, but I love these because they stack. The lids are interchangeable between the two sizes, so you know how those pesky lids like to go away. But, and they also, I don't know if you can see on here, I usually put, instead of tape, sometimes I'll just put like a dry erase marker on the top here, and that will stay, and you'll know what's in your container. So I'm going to let this cool the rest of the way and then I'm just going to stick it in my fridge. Again, we will have this linked in the description, but this is one of my Pyrex containers that comes with a lid. So that was the reason I decided to cook it in this is I knew I was going to be eating this all week and I didn't feel like having to get the loaf pan out and do all the other garbage. So this works perfectly and I'll have this to eat all week. All right, so I have my meatloaf sandwich. Let's give this a try. I'm trying to do this without making a mess. It's not really possible. Good. Be jealous. Be very jealous. Don't tell my grandmother I gave you her recipe. I'd be in trouble. But you gotta try it. It's too good. But don't be telling her, because I'll get in trouble. I mean it. Sometimes the simplest things are the best. Y'all have a fabulous day. And keep on loving the real world. And remember, try it.